Did you know that insect fossils date back 370 million years ago? Everyone thinks that dinosaurs came first, but the fact is that cockroaches were there 120 million years before the dinosaurs roamed the earth. The cockroaches are an ancient group and are 320 million years old. According to researchers from Slavic Academy of Sciences in Slovakia, ancient cockroaches ate the feces of dinosaurs. Unfortunately, the dinosaur poo had little pieces of wood in it that the cockroaches couldn't digest, and the slivers killed them. So those cockroaches may not be the same ones we have now, but you get the picture. Entomology is the science of insects. It is an organized study to obtain knowledge of all phases of insect life and to understand insects' role in nature. Entomologists are people who specialize in entomology. They have background and skills in biology, in particular interests in and knowledge of zoology. There are entomologists in the pest control field, in research in academia, in health control, and even in the military where I was an entomologist. If we think where insects are in the order of things, insects are in kingdom Animalia and phylum Arthropoda. This means that insects are invertebrates, which means they don't have a backbone or spinal cord like reptiles, birds, fish, or even us. Arthropods, which include arachnids, crustaceans, myriapods such as centipedes and millipedes, and insects, have a few other important details. Instead of an internal skeleton, they have an external skeleton or exoskeleton. They also have jointed limbs. Arthropoda is divided into several classes. Arachnida, which includes spiders, ticks, mites, and scorpions, have eight legs or four pairs of legs, no antennae, and two body regions, a cephalothorax and abdomen. Crustacea are mostly sea creatures like crabs and lobsters, but we do have isopods or roly-polies and lawn shrimp. They have usually 10 legs or five pairs, two pairs of antennae, and three body regions. Chylopoda or centipedes are predaceous organisms with one pair of legs per segment and at least 15 body regions. They have one long pair of antennae. Diplopoda, die meaning two, are the millipedes which break down organic matter and can secrete cyanide as a defensive mechanism. They have two pairs of legs per segment, at least 15 body regions and one pair of short antenna. Finally, organisms in class Insecta may or may not have wings, six legs or three pairs of legs, and one pair of antennae. They have three body regions, a head, thorax, and abdomen. You may classify orthopods as bugs, but in this class, bugs refer to true bugs, which include insects such as stink bugs, leaf-footed bugs, harlequin bugs, etc. Therefore, all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Remember that. Also, spiders, centipedes, and other arthropods are not insects, so they will not be our main focus in this class. The insect world is riddled with amazing statistics, and some of the most eye-opening is their abundance. The estimated ratio of insects to humans is 200 million to one. Good thing they're small. Insects average about 40 million per acre of land, and in the U.S., it is home to 400 pounds of insect biomass per acre compared to 14 pounds of flesh and bone. In the Brazilian Amazon, ants alone outweigh the total biomass of all vertebrates by 4 to 1. Based solely on numbers and biomass, insects are the most successful animals on Earth. Out of the approximately 1.8 million known species on Earth, about 1 million of them are insects. That means that there are more kinds of insects on Earth than all other kinds of animals, plants, fungi, and even viruses and bacteria combined. If you add in the, the other arthropods, that is, the other creatures that are closely related to insects, like spiders, ticks, and crustaceans, the number grows to about 1.2 million known species. Many believe that five to seven times as many insects are yet to be discovered. If you want something named after you, just find a new insect species. Very recently, a tiny beetle was named after the 16-year-old environmental com campaigner Greta Thunberg. So now we have the species Neloptodes grete in the books. What makes insects so successful? Probably first and foremost of the biological features is arthropod 
body architecture, which emphasizes a light and strong exoskeleton forming a shell to protect inner tissues and the attachment of muscles. The exoskeleton has a cuticle over top of it to prevent water loss from evaporation, a critical problem for small animals living on the land. Arthropod body architecture also includes jointed appendages that, in insects, have been adapted into legs for locomotion, mouth parts for feeding, structures for reproduction, and other uses. Insects are also animals of relatively small size. Most vary from about 1 16th of an inch to 1 inch. Some may be smaller, however, and a few, such as the 4 inch goliath beetle of Africa and the 13 inch walking stick of Malaysia, definitely fall outside this normal range. Nevertheless, the small size of most insects facilitate dispersal, allow them to escape from birds and other predators, and enables them to use food present only in a small amount. Differing from all other arthropods and invertebrates, most insects can fly. This ability to fly is one of the most important reasons for success of the class as a whole. Flying aids insects in escaping predators and, perhaps more important, enables widespread dispersal of species. This dispersal promotes colonization of new habitats. Finally, the great reproductive capacity of insects and features of their growth and development have enhanced their ability to persist even in unfavorable environments. The ability to lay large numbers of eggs combined with a relatively short generation time produces a great amount of genetic variability that can be tested against the environment. The result is rapid adaptation of populations to changing environmental conditions. These major features collectively unique to insects contribute to their great ecological success. At the dawn of human existence, insects were already entrenched in every conceivable land habitat. They fed on plants, all sorts of animals, and all forms of non-living organic debris. Therefore, it is easy to imagine that they were already feeding as parasites on our earliest ancestors. Some scientists believe that human associations with bedbugs, species closely related to bat parasites, arose from humans sharing caves with bats during the ice ages. Humans were also subject to diseases caused by many microorganisms, including the so-called arboviruses or arthropod-borne viruses transmitted by mosquitoes and other blood-sucking arthropods. Further, plasmodia transmitted by mosquitoes to humans and causes epidemics of malaria must have had a horrendous effects on those early populations, as they still do today. As early humans invaded new habitats, they were exposed to greater contact with insect species previously not encountered. This was the case when humans began to venture into uninhabited regions of Africa in search of game and encountered the setsi fly. This fly is capable of transmitting a tryptosome from antelopes to humans causing African sleeping sickness, a debilitating disease that can be lethal within a few weeks. Therefore, early mankind had various encounters with insects, some good and some bad. As early agriculture developed, humans remodeled the landscape significantly by encouraging some animals and plants to multiply and others to be displaced. The result was local areas with reduced biological diversity and as might be expected, a greater confrontation of humans with insects. Not only were humans to contend with insects feeding on their bodies and transmitting diseases, they also had to concern themselves with insects competing for a desired resource, their crops. Subsequently, when agriculture developed and greater areas of lands were used for farming, pressure from insect populations increased disproportionately, making pest control a major preoccupation. Problems with parasitic insects also became more prevalent with urbanization the congregation of people to form cities. This created greater opportunities for insects to be transferred from one person to the next, as with lice and fleas, and from one household to the next, as with cockroaches and bedbugs. In analyzing the history of human and insect relationships, it might be tempting to believe that insects are our enemies and that their elimination will result in a better world. However, insects have redeeming values both for human existence and the overall ecology of our planet. Insects can benefit humans by providing a product desired for consumption, a primary resource, or by interacting with elements of our environment to yield a benefit, an intermediate resource. 
probably the most valued primary resources insects provide today are silk, honey, wax, and their bodies for human consumption and experimentation. Among the intermediate resources are insect activities as pollinators, natural enemies of pests, food for wildlife, and scavengers. Silk, the queen of fabrics, is woven from thread of fine strands secreted from the salivary glands of silkworms, caterpillars of the moth Bombex mori. The propagation of silkworms for production of this luxurious fabric is believed to have been developed in China as far back as 2500 BC. Honey and wax, of course, are produced by the honeybee, Apis mellifera. Pollination is just as important and occurs by butterflies, bees, flies, and other groups of insects. Moving from flower to flower to collect nectar, insects like bumblebees come in contact with pollen grains that adhere to their legs and body hair. This is especially important in the pollination of fruit and vegetable crops. Many insects are scavengers, breaking down dead animals and plants into usable forms such as these termites in this log. As mentioned earlier, whole insects in addition to their products have been eaten by humans since the beginning of human life. Today, insects continue to serve as food directly and edible insects are a source of protein and fat in otherwise deficient diets of people in many parts of the world. Among the edible insects, termites and grasshoppers are probably the most widely consumed, with caloric value sometimes exceeding 500 calories per 100 insect grams. In the U.S., people are looking to foods like cricket flour to avoid carbs or be gluten-free. Although insects are usually thought of as harmful to humans, probably fewer than 1% of all insect species fall into the pest category. Injury to crop plants, forests, and ornamentals are one of the most conspicuous ways insects cause economic losses to humans. Because approximately one half of all known insects are plant feeders, our greatest number of insect problems involve plants. Insects injure plants by feeding on them and laying eggs in plant tissues. In the process of feeding, some insects such as aphids and leafhoppers also transmit hundreds of kinds of plant pathogens, including bacteria, fungi, viruses, and mycoplasmas that subsequently cause losses from diseases. These insects are known as vectors. Annoyance and injury to humans and domesticated animals are equally important ways that insects affect humans. Mosquitoes, lice, fleas, and biting flies feed on human blood, but more important are insect pests that spread diseases such as yellow fever, dengue, encephalitis, and West Nile virus. Pests of domesticated animals such as stables, flies, horse flies, and screw worms often weaken them, causing them to gain less weight. Destruction or value depreciation of stored products and possessions are sometimes understated. Losses can amount to millions of dollars annually. The most important pests of stored grains are beetles like the granary weevil shown here. Clothes moss and carpet beetles eat anything containing animal fibers. Regrettably, many people believe all insects are bad. We might say that insects suffer from poor public relations. In movies, arthropods usually represent threatening, sinister figures or imagers of danger or death, like this image of an alien mosquito from one of my favorite horror movies, The Mist by Stephen King. Horror fan? Yes, I am. An irrational and lasting fear of real insects resulting in unconventional behavior is known as entomophobia. A somewhat different fear is expressed by persons suffering from delusory parasitosis. Sufferers have hallucinations of bugs on their bodies. In either instance, professional help is usually required to overcome the affliction. A strong confrontational attitude and technological ability to effectively kill insects has given rise to the only good bug is a dead bug and if it moves, kill it syndrome. Such attitudes have created the fetish of an insect-free environment that exists not only around the home, where owners spray chemicals in the yard to eliminate mosquitoes and fleas, but also in agriculture and forest production. Although some improvements in attitude have been made, this fetish continues to be the source of certain water quality and other environmental problems. Although maligned in general, a few insects have a relatively good image. These include producers of useful materials such as bees and silkworms, and famous natural enemies of pests, particularly lady beetles. Other insects have po positive images as objects of beauty. Colorful butterflies, for example, are found in collections among other beautiful objects. Today, so-called butterfly gardens, 
Plantings that attract a variety of butterflies are becoming increasingly popular. Clearly, our culture and environment would be improved with a general change in attitude about insects. If we viewed other insect species as we do butterflies, we could not believe that we would be better off without insects. As T. Eisner has put it, bugs are not going to inherit the earth. They own it now. So we might as well make peace with the landlord.